once again our attention shifts to somewhere else in the world. I've been to Armenia and Azerbaijan. Uh, I'm talking about conflicts here. I've been to Ethiopia and uh, zooming in uh, into Tigray where there was another conflict. And uh, now I almost went across to Mali but never got there. Uh, but now I'm off to Myanmar to find out what the hell's going on over there. Uh, I don't know much about what's going over there. Um, I've heard on the grapevine along the way from time to time a few little things about Myanmar besides the fact that it used to be Burma. Um, now, uh, I believe that the, it used to be a forested area and uh you know and the Khmer Rouge the Khmer people I think used to be indigenous to there who knows who was indigenous way 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 back um but I think the Khmer people used to be there but I think they got pushed out by Chinese kind of people who came down but the Chinese kind of people have been there for so long that they're now the Myanmar type people and the Khmer people down in Cambodia I bet I've butchered all of that but um I believe when the Chinese-style people uh, came down uh, and occupied that area and the Kabir people had to sort of push back, um, I believe they were into chopping down forests. I think the Khmer people are a, a foresty type of, of people. Okay. Uh, yeah, that won't be exactly how it went, you know, what I said there, but, yeah. Um, now. Um, but now, you know, there is a distinct people now called the Myanmar people, I believe, the Burmese. And now, um, now, how did it work then? Okay, and then, um, much less forests in Myanmar than there are in Cambodia, perhaps, for that reason. Is that true? Uh, right. Um, now, I think... Uh, there would have been authoritarian rule in Myanmar um, in times gone by leading right up to the present day. And I think the current leader, uh, Aung San Suu Kyi, uh, who was the darling of the West for a long time, I think her father might have been an authoritarian type of leader and he might have been overthrown. He might have been a one pair on type and he might have been overthrown by a military junta and his daughter, Aung San Suu Kyi, might have ended up in uh, under house arrest in the wash up from all of that somehow. And, um, and whilst she was in under house arrest, um, she pledged her love and devotion to the idea of democracy uh, and became a darling of the West and the military leaders at the time became the bad guys. All right, that's a pretty standard thing. Okay, so she became a kind of Nelson Mandela figure and she ended up with a Nobel Peace Prize for her fight for democracy. Um, eventually, it would appear that she got in and um, there was a power sharing arrangement between the military and Aung San Suu Kyi, I find her name hard to say. And then when she was in power, I, I think the military uh, had a big hand in writing up the new constitution or something like that. You know, they finally had a democracy of sorts, uh, but the military didn't want to give up all power. So they made sure that um, they still maintained a lot of power, retained a lot of power. But, um, and then there was an election. Okay, so it's a democracy, isn't it? And, uh, and Aung San Suu Kyi uh, won in a landslide, but there was, um, and maybe she was, um, and maybe she started sidelining the military in the halls of power. That doesn't work. Um, that, that, that's kind of what happened in Ethiopia recently. A new uh, mob got into power and they started sidelining the previous mob. So maybe something like that was happening in 
uh, Myanmar as well. Um, and, and the end result in Ethiopia of, of all that was that a kind of civil war broke out. Okay, now, so we're over in Myanmar now. Now, the interesting thing about Aung San Suu Kyi is that while she was in power, and, you know, probably trying to um, keep the peace a little bit with the military uh, leaders who were her bedfellows by this at this point in time, um, uh, wasn't very nice to yet another mob who are called the Rohingya people. Now, um, the Myanmar people are a Buddhist lot in general, as far as I have ascertained, and these Rohingya people are a stateless kind of people in the main. Maybe they come, come from somewhere over near Bangladesh or something, or in Bangladesh, you know, um, maybe they look they're stateless, I think. You know, they might be they might have been caught without a state when all the nations were forming, I don't know. Um, but a whole a whole lot of them ended up in Myanmar and they're not welcome. And it would appear they were not welcome even um by Aung San Suu Kyi when she was in power. And she stopped being the darling of the West then because everyone said, Hey, we thought you were nice. And you're being absolutely horrible to the Rohingya. I mean, the military are burning down the camps and you're just sitting there saying nothing. There are people getting around now saying, well, she couldn't really say something, but I thought she was, you know, the great Mandela type who would say something even if it was going to get her killed, let alone put under house arrest again. Um, so she didn't end up quite the hero the West thought she was when it came to the Rohingya people. Yeah. Um, there might also be that issue that she was such a champion for democracy that she looked around and she saw that um, democracy was kind of, in Myanmar, was, uh, you know, um, the majority of people wanted to see the Rohingya genocided. And then you've got a problem, haven't you? What do you do if you're a champion of democracy and democracy says um, genocide for that lot? You know, what if there's a, um, what if, you know, there was a referendum in Myanmar and the majority of people said, slaughter the bastards. What do you do then? Do you believe in democracy or the right thing being done? You know, it gets a bit tricky, doesn't it? Maybe she hasn't um, gone back on her democratic uh, values and it's just the case that Myanmar people are the bastards when it comes to the treatment of the Rohingya people. Who knows? I'm yet to, yeah, you know, I've only just got to my Emma. I don't know much about it yet. Okay, so there's that. All right. But um, let's just put the best possible spin on it for Ayan San Suu Kyi, who by this stage became no longer the darling of the, less, the, the West. Um, let's say she was just trying to um, not have her new government explode. So she was appeasing the military. See, that's not the stuff of a Mandela-type character, is it? But anyway, all right, let's say she's flawed. Um, and uh, people were regretting giving her the Nobel Peace Prize. Um, these places I'm visiting, people seem to get a Nobel Peace Prize in them because in the last place I was at, Ethiopia, the guy there too, he, um, he got a Nobel Peace Prize. And then oversaw some pretty bad things and he's still overseeing those things well and so and saying Aung San Suu Kyi same thing you know darling of the west only wants democracy there's never anything wrong with democracy is there um and when she when she got in power she um was um a silent acquiescer to genocide for the Rohingya people uh, a democracy's got its little flaws, you know, because I think, uh, well, I don't think, uh, back in ancient Greece, you know, where democracy started, um, there was a vote once in Athens about what to do with this other mob who had spi sided with Sparta, and the Athens voted to wipe them out. <laughs> do you really believe in democracy all the way? And we don't, you know. We, um, we have a kind of... Um, sort of democracy, sort of dictatorship in most countries like Australia. We don't, if we had a 
total true democracy in Australia, we'd have capital punishment. But we have, we vote in representative governments who go against the wishes of the people and make us a little bit nicer than we would be otherwise. Um, okay. So where are we at with Myanmar then? The miasma, that is Myanmar. <laughs> uh, well, uh, and Su and Sa Aung San Suu Kyi is now under house arrest, back to square one, even though she um, was not opposing the military leaders um, who were helping her form a, an overall small G government um, when they were causing some sort of genocide uh, with uh, the Rohingya people. She didn't do her any good anyway, so she's back under house arrest. And suddenly she's a bit of a darling again. But uh, we're cautious about her now because we know her true colours now. She's not a total Mandela. Uh, she's more into democracy than doing the right thing. Okay, so that's that. So where do we sit now? Um, well, that's about all I know, really. Uh, I think that's the status quo right now. Uh, what should we in the West be doing? Well, we could say, listen... Aung San Suu Kyi will help you get back into power again, because <laughs> that's what her supporters are asking the West to do. We'll help you get. We'll help you get back into power again. But this time, yes, all right. We said that it was a great thing that you were after a democracy. But can you be a little bit less democratic this time? If you get back in power and get voted in in a landslide and everything, can you not go with the will of the power and people? Can you not go with the will of the people when it comes to the Rohingya people? Um, can you go against the democratic wishes of the people? So we want you to be a bit democratic, but not too democratic, like we are in the West, you know. Um, we'll um, do whatever we can to help you. Yeah, this might be a deal we can make with Aang San Suu Kyi. We'll help you get back into power. But if, you, if your military starts slaughtering Rohingya people, can you just kind of speak up this time and say, oh, that's not quite the thing, you know. Um, even if it does land you back in house arrest again, uh, because, you know, that would be a nice thing to do. You know? Can we cut that deal? Maybe we can cut that deal with Aung San Suu Kyi. I don't know. That's all I know about Myanmar for the moment. Except that there were Aussies on the Burmese railway, the Burma railway, back in World War II. The Japanese must have come sweeping through there. And we went out there to, we went up there to meet them and kind of got captured. <laughs> captured and uh, suffered terribly. We did, we Australians and a lot of other people on our side too. And I, that's about all, I, that's the only other thing I know about Burma. Can't think of anything else. That'll do for this episode. I'm in Burma. <laughs>